In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an e-bike battery pack from low discharge 18650 cells like the ones you can salvage from old laptop batteries. Electric bike batteries like this usually almost all the time require a BMS and that is the battery management system and that is to control the charge and discharge of the battery. But in this video I'm going to show you how to build one without a BMS. So previously my e-bike 48 volt battery was severely damaged by water but I was able to save about 60 cells out of total of 91 cells from this battery pack. I need 31 more cells and I got them from old laptop batteries. These are low discharge cells including the blue ones from my previous e-bike battery pack. This is the reason why the original e-bike battery is arranged in a 7P configuration, meaning it has 7 cells in parallel. That would increase the discharge current by 7 times. If you build an e-bike battery pack out of low discharge cells like these, it is absolutely necessary to put many of them in parallel as possible to increase the discharge current. The downside of this is that the battery pack is going to be really big, so you need to make sure you have enough room for it. The upside is that you can get a longer range on a bigger battery pack. The motor is rated at 48 volts, so I need to build my battery pack that is at least 4 to 8 volts. These 18650 cells are rated at 3.7 volt nominal. So 13 cells in series will produce about 4 to 8 volts. Usually a 48 volt battery pack can be between 12S and 15S. A 12S battery pack is a bit under voltage, but it will still work. This 12S battery pack is what I currently use temporarily on my e-bike. A 15S battery pack is possible, and it will give you more torque and more speed, but you run a risk of damaging your controller due to over voltage. So I'm going to stay on the safe side and build this battery pack the same way as the original pack, which is 13S 7P. Now let's do some calculations. My e-bike motor is rated at 48 volts and 750 watts. So at maximum load, the motor requires 750 watt divided by 48 equals 16 amps. My battery must have a discharge rate of at least the same or more than 16 amps. This particular battery has cells that can output about 3 amp max. With 7 cells in parallel, that's about 21 amp max. That's 5 amps more than the motor requires, so the battery should be able to handle the motor with extra headroom to spare. So for the case of the battery, I'm going to reuse the original case of the battery. So this is the plastic case of the original battery, and uh, it was very dirty. It's full of rust from the old battery, and I already cleaned it up with uh, just a piece of sandpaper. It looks okay now, uh, mostly clean. And then this case is enclosed in this aluminum case. Right, so before you put all this cell together to make your battery pack, there's a few things very important that I need to mention. That is capacity, discharge rate, and voltage. So let's go over first the capacity. So all of these cells have to have the same capacity and as you can see in this box here I've tested all of them and they are between a little bit over 2000 milliamp hour to about 2200 milliamp hour and that's between 90 to 95 percent range number two is discharge rate all of these cells are low discharge cells these are laptop cells and discharge about 3 amps these cells are from my old e-bike battery and I've already tested them and they put out about 3 to 5 amp discharge rate so they're pretty much similar discharge rate as opposed to give you an example this cell here it comes from a top power tool battery from this battery here this cell can put out about 20 amp discharge rate you cannot put this cell in the same battery pack as these cells. And finally, voltage. 
before you put all the cell together they need to have the same voltage and the easiest way to fully charge them to 4.2 volts so those are three important things that you need to keep in mind before you put all these cells together right so it's time to put everything together this pack is 13S7P so we need to first put seven cells in parallel and then I connect to the next seven cells in series all the way down and I have to arrange this battery pack this way because it has to fit in this case and then my next step is to glue all the cells together and I'm going to use my hot glue gun for that uh, it's easier to put on and it's also easy to be removed so that when I have a bad cell I can remove the cell very easily It dries really quickly, and you just have to turn over and we'll come to this side. So here we go, all glued together, nice and straight. So here we go, I'm done with the first pack. I got three layers, completely done. I put some glossy paper over here so that uh, the glue doesn't get stuck to the box and it helps a lot. The hot glue gun works great and the glue dries very quickly, especially when I use a fan to fan it, it dries in seconds and it dries fast it's easy to put on and it's easy to be removed so uh, let me show you how easy it is to remove so let's suppose that uh, you have a bad cell right here so all you gotta do is just to bend it and it will come out very easily okay and then you can put a new cell back in very easily so next I'm going to use clear tape and tape all the layers together here we go very simple but effective, very sturdy. Here is the second pack that I just made. This is the first pack. This pack is 7S, this pack is 6S. And then when I put both of these in series to produce a 13S battery pack. For the second pack, I have to put a fake cell at the end. And this will help to make the pack more sturdy. Now it's time to connect all the terminals together. I'm going to use my spot welder and weld all the terminals together. So I have just finished the two packs. This one is 6S7P. This one is 7S7P. And on this pack, I made the nickel strip a little bit longer so that it will be connected to the terminal on the other pack. So negative on this pack is connected to positive on this pack.
So here we go. I've got the battery completed. Got the series connection completed. And this part here is the hardest part because I have to hold on both sides and lift it up so that I can weld it together like this. Now this, when I fold this together, it's going to short out because this touches that, it's going to short out. So that's why I have to have this. Now I just have to fold this back like so. Okay. And then this is going to go in here. So now we just fold it together. Boom. That's it. Nice and neat. Right, so I've got my battery packed together now. And it's time to install a BMS. And I choose not to install a BMS. For two main reasons. Number one is cost. Number two is reliability. And I'm not going into details of how I choose this option because this video is going to be too long. So basically I'm just going to use my balance charging cable to install on my battery so I can charge the battery externally using two balance charger. So this cable is going to be for the 6S pack on the left. This cable it's going to be for the 7S pack on the right. And I use two balance charger to charge this whole battery pack. So the battery pack is now complete. So this is basically a 6S and 7S connected in series. In which each has its own power and balance cable. So what comes out of here is 24 volts with balance cable. What comes out of here? is 7S 28 volts and here is the balance cable so when I charge them I charge them separately with two different chargers and what comes out of here is the main cable which is 52 volts quick voltage test 24.9 for this pack Twenty-eight point nine, and the main cable 53.8 so here is my balance charger charging my 6s battery pack at about 1 amp so here is my 7s pack it's being charged by my balance charger charging at 1 amp right now and it works great And because the battery doesn't have a BMS, I'm going to use this little voltage display to monitor the state of charge of the battery. Right, so here is the moment of truth. I just plugged in the battery. Let's give it a try. Let's turn it on. Nice. Got all four bars. The other battery, the cobalt battery, when I plugged it in, only gave me about three or even two bars when fully charged. This one's got four bars, so pretty good. Now let's try and see if it works.
Alright, this drive was about three miles and I still got four bars and the battery voltage is 53 volts I believe I started about 53.8 volts now 53 that's about 90 to 95 percent full that's pretty good it's got good torque good speed 13 degrees Celsius see the at ground temperature 9 degrees Celsius battery stays cool and that's it for now next video I'm gonna do a full range test to see how many miles the battery is gonna give me and until then see you next time